everyone, my name is Rebecca Grace and I'm a Squarespace expert and website designer. Today we're going to be talking about five mistakes to avoid when adding code to your Squarespace website. I am a huge advocate of code snippets and applying code to your website to break free of that template, but if you're just kind of copying and pasting codes in from a bunch of different places, chances are you're going to come up with some errors because there is some best practices that you should follow as you're adding code snippets to your website, especially if it's from a bunch of different resources and places. So let's jump right in. The first one is pasting the code in any order. And this is sort of specifically talking about CSS. So if you're trying to change the style of your site, chances are you're adding custom CSS. So that would be in design, custom CSS. And CSS actually stands for cascading style sheet, meaning that it reads top to bottom. So for example, I have this tagged as a title. So if I set the color of this to red, and then later down my code, I set the color to blue, the browser is going to change it blue and it's going to ignore the code above that said for it to be red. Um, and if you're not kind of careful and you're just copying and pasting this in, this can cause a couple problems. One, you've now told the browser two different things. And so your site's gonna load a little bit slower because there's twice the number of things to, to read and think about. Uh, the second, if you've forgotten that you've put this in, and at the top of your code, you're here and you're like, well, actually I want it green and nothing happens. I want it orange, nothing happens. And so you're spending lots of time trying to edit this and nothing's happening. Um, that can be very, very frustrating. So it's helpful to make sure that as you're going through, you're organizing your code so that you don't have these duplicates or you're not spending time um, on unnecessary parts that, that you don't have to. Kind of leading into our second mistake is not adding comments to your code. Comments are essentially parts of your code that the browser does not read. It realizes it's just for you. To do that in CSS, you add a slash star and then a star slash. And you'll notice it kind of has this gray color. Anything that you add between this, the browser understands is just for you and not for the browser to interpret. So I like to go through my code and kind of organize and make notes throughout the code so that I know exactly what each code is for um, and to help kind of organize it in order. So I'll generally start at the top of my CSS with whole site and anything underneath this will be code that's um, site-wide. Then I'll have a section that says homepage. And anything under that will be code that's for my homepage and so on. And so this keeps these bits of codes together so it's easier for me to see, oh, I've already got code there for my title. So now it will, the orange part will work because I don't have something a duplicate later on. So adding these comments to your CSS, especially your CSS because it tends to be a little bit longer, um, this will help you stay organized and keep track. Plus, as you go through, especially if you're using block IDs or collection IDs, just a bunch of random letters and numbers here, you might forget what that is for. And so this will just help you understand exactly what that code is for and stay organized. You can do the same commenting in your JavaScript. So in settings, advanced, code injection. In here, you can comment code by using um, a bracket, exclamation point, dash, dash, and then to finish it off, dash, dash, and bracket. So anything you put in here will also be considered a comment. And so I'll usually say something like header. And then underneath, I might even do end of header so that I know all the code in between here is for my header or whatever I've, I've added in there. The next mistake to avoid is not being selective of the code that you use. It can be very tempting as you're trying to do something on your site to say, okay, I want a code snippet to do this, research the code snippet to use. Um, but again, this is adding more and more information for your browser to have to read as it loads your site. And so you don't want to just be adding code in sort of 
willy-nilly. You want to make sure that the code you're adding in is important and necessary. So please make sure that before you go adding bits of code to your website, that it can't be done in the Squarespace editor. And this is especially true for images. A lot of people like to create that sort of layering effect where it looks like sections are overlapping. Um, so you maybe have a text box that overlaps or an image that overlaps. I mean, they immediately go to code, but moving things around can be a little bit tricky um, when you're using CSS or JavaScript to move things around the page, and it can create a lot of problems, especially on the mobile version of your site. So before you start adding that code in, see if there's a creative way that you can do that. And a lot of those effects are actually created by using um, a background image in a creative way. So the background image itself might actually be half this kind of plant image and half this gray color. So it looks like these words are maybe overlapping this section when really half this background image is just the gray color and so on. So before you start looking for code snippets, make sure that it can't be done in the Squarespace editor itself, um, just to ensure that you're not having all sorts of code and unnecessary code on your site, again, for page speed reasons. And leading us into mistake number four is duplicating code. And I've mentioned this a couple times. You don't want unnecessary code on your site. It will slow your site down. And so I'm going to go over sort of the two most common places that I see duplicates. The first one being in the CSS. A lot of businesses like to add media queries to their site to help make their site more mobile friendly. Um, if you're doing this, make sure that you only add one media query itself. Um, so for example, I may have a section that says mobile version. And then underneath here is where I'll add all of the code for the mobile version of my site. So I'll add in my media query. And then between these two brackets, we'll go all of the code that I want to apply on my mobile site. You don't want this line over and over and over again within your code. Um, one, it helps you stay organized, and again, you don't need that duplicate. The other duplicate I see, which causes a lot of issues, is multiple jQuery libraries. So jQuery is a library inside JavaScript um, that a lot of designers use, especially if you're using plugins. And so if you've copied and used plugins from different developers, you may end up with multiple versions of this code on your site. So go into your settings, advanced code injection, and usually it will be within the header. And you'll see it lines like this. So we'll have some sort of um, library that says jQuery and then a bunch of numbers. And you'll notice here I have two versions of that on my site. So essentially this is the updated library. However, depending on when they wrote the code for that plugin, they may have used an older version. And so if you have multiple versions loaded, it can cause conflicts in your code. So if you are uploading a plugin, you followed all the steps correctly and it's not working, check and see if you have duplicated versions of the jQuery library. If you do, then what I suggest is go to one of these lines and comment it out, meaning add that bracket exclamation point dash dash, and at the end of the script, add dash dash bracket. And you'll notice that line is now gray, so it's reading it as a comment and not adding it to your site. Leave the other one on and see if your plugins work. If they don't, then comment out the other line. So go through and add the comment to the other library, see if it works. If it doesn't, either the error is somewhere else in your code, or it's possible that the plugins you're using require different versions of the jQuery library. And in that case, I suggest contacting the person you got the plugin from, the developer, and seeing if they can help you or if they have an updated version of their plugin. The last mistake that I want to go over is not spring cleaning. And this is especially true for people who have had their site for a couple years or a little bit of time, 
or maybe you've made, just done a huge update on your site, every year I set aside time in my business to go through my website and do some spring cleaning. So I go through all of my pages, I delete the ones that I'm no longer using, I update and refresh the ones that I'm still using, make sure all of my links are in good working order, and then I comb through all of my code, especially my CSS, and delete any code that I'm no longer using. This is another really good reason that comments are so important, because as you go through, you might see that you have a section of your code for maybe a booking page that you no longer have on your site. And so you can delete all of the code in that section because that page is no longer there. And so I'd strongly suggest going through um, every year or every couple of months or after a big update and combing through your code to delete anything that's, that doesn't need to be there. So there you have it. Those are the five mistakes to avoid when adding code snippets to your website. This is not to scare you. I hope that didn't scare you for adding code snippets to your website. Um, but I just hope that this maybe prevents some errors from popping up um, so that your copying and pasting becomes much smoother and easier and you're not frustrated by things breaking on your site.